Mina, come on, Jesus freaking gamer here. Read Psalm 74 and the, la the, the last two Psalms, Psalm 73 and 74, are both Psalms of Asaph. And it brought to mind, I'm not even covering anything in Psalm 74, at least not for this little message here. I was just reading through this and I was like, you know, this reminds me of the last time I went through the Word of God. And I got this very definite feeling. I went, in my yesterday's message, I talked about how much I love Psalm 73, how it's probably one of my favorite psalms of all time, just because of the things that it covers. Read Psalm 74 by the same dude. I didn't mention that Psalm 73 was of Asaph yesterday. But I noticed that, I, you know, I knew it was, I was just like, it's not really relevant to the topic. But today, read Psalm 74, and it was once again, excuse me for that, made by Asaph, and I was like, you know, reminds me of the last time I read through the Bible, I really like Asaph's stuff more than I do David's. I don't know, it just, it sounds better, I like the topics covered better, I like the way it's worded better, maybe it's something in translation, maybe it's a difference, you know, in English as opposed to Hebrew that I just don't understand, but I just like the style and the flow of his psalms better. And when I thought that, you know, I'm just saying to myself, I'm like, man, I really like Asaph's work. This is really good stuff. And it just occurred to me, I wonder how many Christians out there would think it blasphemous to, in any way, shape, or form, look down on King David's Psalms in any way, or say that, you know, how dare you think they're not the superior, they're not the best, you know, he was King David, he was best king of Israel. He's the one who had the idea for the psalms to begin with. He has the most psalms in there. He has the longest psalm, Psalm 119 in there. Obviously, he's the better one. He was Asaph. He was one of the king's hirees. He was one of the worship leaders. Pretty sure he was the worship leader, actually. I'm pretty sure he was the chief worship leader amongst all of the men that David hired. And to that attitude overall... I would just I would like to speak for a second because I, I get this idea that within Christianity there are certain people that you just like you don't talk bad about, you don't express opinions about. And when I say that, I say that very loosely. Obviously, I've covered a lot of David's Psalms up to this point. Got a lot of good stuff out of them. I like them. I am a fan of them. I think they are good. And there's most certainly, even more importantly than that, they are certainly the word of God, inspired by God, uh, many of them prophetic, speaking thousands of years into the future, and the things David himself didn't even know he was addressing, because God was involved in his work. All due credit to David for being an instrument used by God to speak through. With that being said, I don't have to think that David was the ultimate worship leader or the ultimate songwriter. Just as I don't have to think Paul was the best apostle of all time. I understand that he, uh, again, I like Paul. It's good, it's good stuff. I really admire his work. I'm glad he wrote half the New Testament. I'm very thankful for that. Doesn't mean he he's my favorite apostle. Doesn't mean that he didn't have some problems in his life, even post-Christianity. It doesn't mean that, you know, there will never be a psalm writer like David, and there will never be a missionary like Paul. It doesn't mean that. Our goal isn't other human beings. Our goal is Jesus. Our goal is God. Our goal is to be like the Most High, not like His servants. They're here as examples and as models, and they were used by God to convey various truths. God gets the credit for that, not them. And if I happen to prefer a certain one over another, I like Asaph's stuff a bit more than I like David's. And I like Peter's stuff a lot more than Paul's, just because Peter reminds me a lot of myself. Loud, brazen, um, arrogant, Insert open mouth, insert foot. I, I, I identify with the guy, so I like him quite a bit more than I like Paul. And you know what? I should have the room to feel that way. It's all the word of God. I get something out of all of it, but I have my preferences. And that should be okay. And because I suspect this, I, I've seen 
hints, traces, traces, dashes, if you will, of this in the church and various um, streams and various mentalities, I wanted to address it in a video and say, you know what? That is not okay. I should be allowed to like who I like. And no human is my goal. Jesus Christ alone is that. And certain examples speak to me a bit more than others, probably because I need those things. It's probably stuff that I need to hear. Or it may just be stuff that I like personally. It's, it, I, the, the interests are similar to me. Different people like different things. And there needs to be room for that in the body of Christ. There needs to be room for that amongst Christians, amongst churches, even amongst theologians and scholars. There needs to be room for variety and taste and difference. God created a lot of different variety, tastes and differences down here. All of them are good. All of them have their place. And they all deserve proper respect. But we as individual humans are allowed to like certain things over others. So, just want to put out my six minutes worth of two cents. That was a long two cents. Uh, hopefully it was good for y'all. Hopefully it ministered to you. If you object to what I said, leave a comment down in the um, comment section below. I'd love to talk to you and see um, what you think. And maybe even see why I'm wrong in this. And why those guys should be lifted up. Um, I've explained my position. I'd love to hear a counter argument to that. Thank you very much for watching this video. I love you and God bless.